Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with another Boomstick Critique. I figured I would go ahead and do another Children of the Corn movie for today. Uh, I figured this time I'd do the remake because I knew the remake sucked, and the sooner I got it over with, the better for me because I hate it so bad. Um, I'll just go ahead and give my rating for the remake. I'll give this movie a zero. Big zero. I hardly ever hand out zeros for movies because most of the time I can find stuff a little redeeming in them. But for this piece of shit, zero. The big problem with this movie is that, once again, it's the same damn short story, so they have to stretch it out and add padding to it. So this one goes, it's pretty much the, really the original movie people say was a lot different from the short story, but it really wasn't. It's actually very close. The only thing they changed was they added in uh, two little likable kids. Um, the couple didn't argue as much. <laughs> and the ending was different. That's it. That's like three. It's th like three things. Even though I held up four fingers, <laughs> that's like three things. But uh, honestly, other than that, it was pretty faithful. But uh, but and those other the things they that it took out, like the two little cute kids, we didn't really need that in the original. You didn't really need that at all. So I taken that out. I really don't have a problem with. They they take those characters out in the remake, and that's fine with me. Um, other thing, the the remake does stick closer to the short story in terms of like, um, uh, well, it, it sticks completely close to the short story. But the problem is, is basically what this remake does is it takes the short story and drags out the plot lines of the short story and just extends them. Doesn't add anything to them, just extends them and makes them longer than they need to be, so it becomes more aggravating when you see them on screen. So that's the problem here. The couple in the book, I mean, the short story argued like all the time, and that works for a little short story because it's only a few pages. But here they argue nonstop and you get tired of it, and because they argue so much, you don't care if they die. Why do I care if these people die? And if I don't care if they die, then why am I even watching the movie? Because if, when they get into trouble, I'm just like, are they dead yet? I don't care. It doesn't work for a film. It doesn't pay off. Unless there's some kind of like character arc where they stop being such assholes, and that really doesn't happen here. Another problem with the movie is Bert in this one is like a Vietnam vet, and he's like an ultimate badass, and he can like whoop like fucking five or six, seven, eight, nine people single handedly. And so when he gets in a fight with the kids, he literally just like snaps their bones and everything and punches the shit out of them and kills them in like two hits. So. I like the fact that he's ballsy and he's not afraid to kill off kids if he has to. But the problem is, is that he's so tough that, you know, what's the point? It's like the kids are totally outclassed. It's like the kids versus Rambo here, you know. And if this one guy is like so good at kicking their ass and killing them, how'd they ever kill everybody in a town? I mean, that goes once again to the unbelievableness of this story, which is why it would work better as like a little chiller episode. A little chiller, like a uh, horror, like anthology episode, where it would work better as that, this story would, than a whole movie. Because when it's stretched out, you question it more, and when you question it more, you pick apart the story more. Uh, so that's problem number one. If they can't even kill one dude, then <laughs> how'd they kill the whole damn town? But anyway, and another problem is the guy who plays I, uh, Malachi, he's okay. He doesn't have the uh, intenseness of Courtney Gaines from the original, but he tries. He kind of has like a goofy look on his face. He has like, I mean, he just, the actor just has like a goofy face. Uh, pretty much the story is exactly the same here, except for the beginning, they slaughter a pig instead of the town. So it's a much lamer opening. So it's just like, you know, the opening in the original film was much better than the one here. I haven't read, the, I haven't seen the, sh read the short story in forever. Uh, or looked up the short story in forever. So this is how the short story opened. This is a much lamer opening than the film. Well, once again, this would work for a short story, but it wouldn't work for a film. They made the right choice in changing it for the film because you need something like intense to get people hooked, and the rest of the story is going to be more suspense and discovering what's going on, like they did in the original. Which, when they, you know, like they look to the town and stuff to try to find clues about what the hell happened to everybody, like Bert, you know, Bert did that in the original. So you needed something to uh, have be really dramatic and happen at the start of the original to keep people interested. But here they don't have that. It's just a pig getting killed. So I'm like, eh, well, okay. <laughs> it's, you know, it's really nothing. And the guy who plays Isaac, horrible. The boy who plays Isaac is horrible. He has none of the veracity that John Franklin had. He's horrible. He's not able to con to convey the fire and brimstone aspects at all. And once again, the film 
other than adding in the extra arguing moments and the, the little short lame opening, it's pretty much the same exact damn movie. They hit a kid who was like already dead. Uh, then they wander through the town. Bert does for feels like forever looking for help of some kind. It takes forever, and except this time they argue more, so it makes them way unlikable. I like the fact that uh, Bert's wife was like African American. I thought that was cool because the movie took place in like the seventies or the sixties or late sixties or were. So back then there weren't a lot of like interracial couples, so I thought that kind of added to the movie a little bit. I kind of like that, but it was never like touched upon whatsoever in the in the movie for some reason. That was kind of weird, but um. Yeah, still they argue a lot. Um, Vicky, the actress who plays Vicky, is not as nowhere near as good as Lyndall Hamilton, and the guy who plays Bert in this movie is not as good as Peter Horton either. Um, he's all right though; he's not bad. I mean, he's he's okay. Uh, he's better than the chick that plays uh, Vicky, but then again, he gets a lot more to do than her. His character does, so you know, maybe it's just I got to see him more. But anyway, she gets kidnapped, but before she does, she like shotguns one kid or whatever, so that's kind of cool. She gets, she dies, she gets her like eyeballs cut out or whatever. You don't see it on screen, she just dies off screen. You see her body at the end where she's been like turned into a scarecrow. And Bert kicks everybody's ass, and then he disappears into the cornfield. Um, and then you get this really stupid, out of place like scene where Bert is freaking out because he was in Vietnam and he's having like. Vietnam flashbacks and he's seeing soldiers and everything in the cornfield. It's totally out of place and doesn't fit this movie whatsoever and feels really weird. And meanwhile, <laughs> you get this sex scene of like these two like uh, pretty much adults, so like 18 I guess, having sex or whatever. Um, so they can produce another child of the corn, which I know they added that in to explain how do they keep, you know, gaining new children, but I'm like, you really don't need that. I mean, I always assumed that in the original. I mean, I know some people are always confused, like, how do they keep repopulating if everybody sacrifices themselves? I'm like, it's pretty obvious they just, the older kids just have sex. I mean, it's not, like, really hard to fathom. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> the sex scene is, like, really goofy because he's, like, banging the chick, and there's, like, a little boy watching, and he's, like, hopping up down like he's on, you know, sugar crank or something. And <laughs> It just looks really stupid, and then like while he's while the dude's like banging her or whatever, and she's like you know going ah uh, ah uh, like over and over, uh, it's flashing to like scenes of Bert in the cornfield, and Bert in the cornfield is like yelling up in air like ah, it's like really goofy, <laughs> and like uh at the end of the sex scene, she she makes like this orgasm face, and like while she does it, Bert is like yelling up in the air and like yelling in the cornfield like ah. It's just really goofy and stupid how it looks spliced together. It's really stupid, horrible editing choice. And then after that, Bert's pretty much won. All Bert has to do is make it to the road, and Bert's home free. If he makes it to the road, he's won. He's beat the kids. It's over. So what happens is, is the creature, he who walks behind the rose himself, has to kill Bert. And what's funny about this to me is this dude, Bert, has survived all of this, only for his death scene to be the most idiotic one I've ever seen on film, where basically what it is, is they have no budget in this movie to show he who walks behind the rose. None. <clears throat> so at the end, Bert is like, beat the shit out of everybody, and he's just like, in the cornfield, in the middle of it, and then he just turns around, and this, the camera just like, comes towards his face, and he just goes, ah! and it just it, it skips to the next day, and he's dead, and that's the end of the movie. I'm like, wow. That's horrible. That's terrible ending. Now, the ending in the short story, Bert dies as well. But you see he who walks. You mean they describe he who walks behind the rose in the short story. But because they don't have the money to show Bert, to show he who walks behind the rose kill Bert here, um, it just comes off as stupid. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, total zero. Half the movie was the same shit I've seen before in the original, so it didn't add anything new. And the stuff that it added new was either goofy or stupid, or badly edited, or just, or just didn't work, and they got lamer actors this time, so it didn't help. Uh, they stuck closer to the short story, but again, if you adapt, if you adapt a short story word for word, page for page on the screen, it doesn't flow right because you're just stretching out the shit that was already there and you're not adding anything new to it. So if the stuff in the short story was the couple arguing, you get twice as much of that here, so it becomes. Um, so obnoxious you can't stand it and you don't care if these characters live or die that works in a short story because you don't get to spend as much time with them so you're more interested in like what's going on 
because you're having to like figure it out more and everything. But here everything gets ex extended so you spend more time with the stuff you don't want to <laughs> instead of being able to figure out stuff you want to know or spend more time figuring out stuff you want to know like you would in a short story. So it's more obnoxious here so you don't give a shit what happens to them. Um, in the short story you at least <clears throat> care enough about them they don't they don't argue as much because this is extended you get twice as much of that shit and it's horrible um, also the ending uh, is just downright atrocious to this movie and if you watch it past the credits you get a bonus scene where like all the older kids are sacrificing themselves including Malachi and his like woman Ruth or whatever it hates he who walks behind the rose and she's having a vision of herself burning the cornfield down and I guess killing the monster or whatever um, so um, that should have been the ending, really. They shouldn't have put that after the credits. I don't know why they did. Why they did that, I have no idea. Uh, that was stupid. I guess they were hoping for like a, a sequel or something. I don't know. But uh, anyway, that was stupid. That should have been the regular ending. <clears throat> um, I guess if they would have made a sequel, Ruth would have been like the hero or something or whatever, and she would have burnt the cornfield down, killing the monster or whatever the hell. But since we didn't get one, we got what we got here. Uh, this sucks ass. Uh, zero. It's just a waste of time. I feel like I, when I was watching the film, I just feel like I saw it already. And then the extended stuff was just annoying. So, all in all, zero. So, yeah, I'll see you guys again with the next Journal of Corn movie.